Mount St. Helens. To early Native Americans, the steam plumes were signs of warring spirits, and they dared not scale its peak. To people of the 1980s, its eruption was an unparalleled natural occurrence that forever changed the perfect face of what some called America's Mount Fuji. In the aftermath of the explosion, officials were scurrying to decide the best way to take care of some of the problems of volcanic eruption can cause modern civilization. In addition to all the ash that fell, one of the major problems was erosion. Millions of cubic yards of volcanic wreckage surged down the mountain during the eruption, swelling the rivers with debris. The North Fork of the Toodle River was reported to be carrying sediment downstream faster than the Nile or the Amazon. This brought the threat of enormous flooding in the winter, as well as wind erosion of the lighter top layers of debris. $20 million in federal emergency relief funds were given to the Soil Conservation Service to quell the fears of erosion. Part of the plan, seed and chemically fertilize about 20,000 acres around the mountain. Some of those seeds landed here in the Toodle River Valley. I, I guess the overriding reason to seed was, uh, was for emergency watershed protection and, and the primary objective was to control uh, or prevent downstream sedimentation. Now, Jack Carlson of the Soil Conservation, Conservation Service remembers the project. There was an immediate demand for a half a million pounds of seeds. Because native species are not in demand commercially, they had to go with planting the more plentiful, exotic, or non-native species, like ryegrass and clover, rather than those that occur naturally in the forest. That's just been our culture and tradition in erosion control work uh, for the past uh, 50 years, and that uh, these non-native species, uh, we essentially brought them over from Europe, and our ancestors knew that they worked well, and, uh, and so we've essentially transplanted our culture here to the Pacific Northwest. And we estimate that uh, approximately 2.5 million tons of sediment was kept on the slopes as a result of the seeding. It seemed logical that through this plan, coordinated by the SCS and participated in by several other agencies, erosion would be stopped, surrounding communities protected, and the forest possibly restored quicker. It was not to be that simple. Approximately one-third to one-half of the seeding failed to do its job due to either not being able to take root in unfriendly terrain or being planted after the erosion had simply run its course. Later, some discovered erosion was actually positive in that it uncovered native plants that had survived the blast. But most disturbing is that some, especially those in the scientific community, consider the introduction of non-native species near a national monument an ecological disaster. Peter Frenzen, monument scientist for Mount St. Helens, explains why. You have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to study the process that has shaped the forests of the Cascade Mountains. And so, from the standpoint of a scientist studying a natural process, it's, it's a really a negative thing because you're, you're not able to see what nature would do on its own uh, as, to recover the area around the volcano. The the biggest ill effect uh, of introduced species in this area is, is just the, the physical taking of the growing space. It's a solid mat of lots and lots and lots of fine roots. And uh, if you were a seed landing on this, uh, you can imagine the amount of water, any of the available water on the surface is, is exploited and taken up by these roots. A lot of the available nutrients are also taken up by the by these as well so to land here is to land in the company of of something that's already moved in and taken up all the available resources to grow here the possible squelching of native vegetation around mount st helens irked the scientific community enough for almost a thousand biologists to sign a petition urging officials to dump the seeding idea altogether but to no avail you feel a little bit maybe like your your laboratory has been destroyed I don't know if it's been destroyed it's certainly been forever altered and somewhat compromised an area had been designated around the mountain as a national monument not to be touched by the seeding project but exotics are creeping over the boundaries due to wind and one species here 
that has made an amazing comeback as a result of the seeding project. Elk. The abundant grasses here are excellent forage for them, so this is a popular, thriving winter range. But the other thing is these, these seeds are being moved around. They're being moved upstream uh, by elk that feed on these seeds here and carry them upstream and deposit them in their feces while they feed in the monument. We've looked at some uh, satellite photos and it doesn't appear that there's a swath of green vegetation that's, that's marching up the uh, marching up the mud flow, but, it, uh, but apparently there are some patches here and there where the seeded species are starting to appear in the monument. Is that what you see? The elk also like to nibble on the young trees that are trying to get reestablished here, like this willow. And they like to rub their horns on trees that have managed to get a little bigger, like this alder. And that can be quite damaging and in some cases kills the trees back. The SCS says they can't apply what they've learned from this project to similar situations, such as a large burn. And if they had to do it again, they would seed smaller areas and insist on native plants. We did not use native plants. And, and from my own uh, personal point of view, we, we should have used natives. The, the unfortunate part was is they're just not available in commercial quantities at all. Still, exotic or native, the question of whether there should have been seeding at all remains. I mean, the last 40,000 years, Mount St. Helens has erupted dozens and dozens of times. We have an opportunity to see one particular chapter happen, you know, in, in our lifetimes, and then to study the aftermath and the effects of that, and to watch how an entire ecosystem is, is assembled one species at a time. Looks like a wild rose. You know, if you think about it, our perspective in the Earth we live on, our perspective is that it's a very static Earth. I mean, we take for granted that our house is there and, and our neighborhood is there, and then you come back in a year, it'll be there. You come back in 10 years, it'll be there. But on May 18, 1980, Mount St. Helens shook our perspective. She pushed civilization back and gave us a chance to see life appear from the beginning. In 200 years, no one will be able to tell this happened. But for now, we wait and watch, hoping humankind hasn't drastically altered the pristine palette, our momentary glimpse into the evolution of nature.